Hello, I am Zarkoon. This is World of Warships Legends. Today I bring you a video on the Tier 5 American Tech Tree Cruiser Pensacola. I've had a few requests to do a video about this ship and give a nice commander build for it and some strategy and tips on how to play it, so that's what I'm going to do here. You see I've got the Pensacola on screen right now, Aiming Systems Mod 1 and Propulsion Mod installed. It is fully upgraded. I finished grinding it quite a while ago, so I like to think I know what I'm doing in this ship. I'm gonna go over my commander build, or at least the key aspects of it, take a look at how those aspects influence the stats, and jump into some gameplay. So, got a level 11 Norm Scott on here, Mikawa and Yamamoto as inspirations, and you can see I've selected Punch Through to increase the AP shell damage and AP shell penetration. However, if you don't want to do this and you want to be more defensive, we've got Armed and Ready, which gives you a numeric indication of the number of enemy ships targeting you. That can be helpful for knowing when to turn and disengage, which you're going to need to do quite a bit in the ship. Stats here, the guns are the main point. It's got 10 203mm guns, or 8-inch guns, they fire out to a range of 16.6 kilometers on my build, along with the Epic Booster Battle Propensity flag. They reload in 15 seconds, which is outrageously slow. Probably the slowest reload for any cruiser at the tier. The next comparable ship, Tier 5 Aoba, also has the same gun caliber. Those on my build reload in 10 and a half seconds. Also, Pensacola here takes 45 seconds to turn its guns 180 degrees. So that, of course, is just incredibly slow, even by battleship standards, really much less cruisers. So you're going to spend quite a bit of time having to manage your guns in this game and keep them on target. The HE shells on the Pensacola do a maximum of 2,800 damage with a 16 and a half percent chance to start fire, and the AP shells do a maximum of 4,800 damage, 4,830 to be precise on my build here. And this ship is all about the AP, really, in stark contrast to its predecessor. AP is almost your primary shell type on this ship. So, you know, now that I've highlighted those stats, we will jump into some gameplay now, and talk a little bit more about the Pensacola and show it in action. We're going to be on New Dawn in Capture the Base mode in our Tier 5 Pensacola. And as I was saying about the Omaha, there's one on the enemy team, two on the enemy team actually in this game. The Omaha is a light cruiser, whereas the Pensacola is a heavy cruiser. I can't remember the gun size on the Omaha right now, actually. I'm drawing a blank. Is it 127 millimeters or 152? Either way, they're small caliber guns compared to the Pensacola's 203 millimeter guns. So it's a light cruiser. The guns on the Omaha fire much quicker. You can use them as HE spamming guns to light fires pretty effectively on battleships, even on enemy cruisers at longer ranges and to quickly take out enemy destroyers. And at closer ranges on the Omaha, you can use the AP to shred broadside cruisers. The Pensacola, however, is almost the exact opposite of that. Its guns reload in 15 seconds. The Omaha's, I think, in five or six, so much slower. And it's the AP on the Pensacola that hits much, much harder. The AP on the American cruisers has improved penetration angles, I think. It's either improved penetration angles or improved overall penetration. Not sure exactly which. Either way, they are incredibly capable of punching through the armor on cruisers. Tier 4 cruisers especially, and the Omaha in particular, it seems like you can punch through that armor with these guns at almost any angle. It's quite ridiculous and you can easily take out tier 5 cruisers 
tier 5 cruisers, this thing is dangerous to tier 6 cruisers too. The AP is not to be underestimated, and against broadside battleships it also can be surprisingly effective. You are fully capable of citadeling some more lightly armored battleships with the Pensacola's AP. I'm thinking things like Normandy, uh, Fuso, I've citadeled several Fusos in the games that I've played to try and get a good match for you guys here. But the turrets themselves, you can see just how long it takes for those yellow circles to creep along the line and get on target. I think if you're not using the gun lock feature that you can find if you go into the settings and select controller preset 3, you can use the L3 button or the left stick button on the Xbox to lock the guns in position. I find that incredibly useful for the ship. I think it would be a lot more difficult to play without it. It allows you to sort of preemptively aim your guns, lock them in place, and then you can maneuver while they're locked without having to worry too much about them getting too far away from the target. The fact that they are so slow is rather restrictive and you know couple the fact that they take a long time to reload that makes it important to aim well in this ship and to try and get the most out of all the salvos you send at enemies. You don't have an incredibly quick damage per minute output. I mean essentially 15 seconds, that's half of 30 seconds. 30 seconds is half of a minute, so at best with this build you can put out four salvos in the span of a minute. A lot of the other cruisers at tier 5, probably all of them except maybe except for the Graf Spee, are going to be able to shoot much faster than you. Whether they have a higher damage per minute or not, I guess depends on how much damage their shells do, but I would guess that most of them do. So you need to make your shots count, you need to aim well, and you need to do what you can to keep your guns on target. But what you don't want to do is show broadside in this thing, especially to enemy battleships. Pensacola I have heard described as the floating citadel of sadness, and I would agree with that assessment. Now this ship is armored, of course. It's much more armored than the Omaha at Tier 4. And as a result, when a battleship shoots AP at you, it's more likely that their shells are going to penetrate your armor, and because your armor is a little bit thicker, you're going to arm the fuse on those AP shells, and they're going to detonate inside of your citadel and cause you a lot of pain and suffering. On the more lightly armored cruisers like the Omaha, sometimes there's a good chance that the battleship caliber AP will penetrate the Omaha's armor, and then the armor will be so thin that the AP shell won't arm, it'll go out the other side of the ship and not detonate inside. It'll be an overpenetration, you see, which is only 10% of the battleship shell's uh, total damage. So not anywhere near catastrophic as Citadel hits are. But what battleships can do to the Pensacola with their AP, the Pensacola can do to enemy cruisers. Got a shot out at the Emil out there. We hit him for 10k and a Citadel. And that is what this ship is primarily all about. Your light cruisers like the Omaha and those with the smaller caliber uh, more quick firing guns, they are your typical destroyer counters. They're pretty good at taking out enemy destroyers quickly with rapid fire HE. The Pensacola, on the other hand, and the American heavy cruisers in general, much more effective cruiser counters. With their incredible AP, they're able to punish broadside enemy cruisers and take them out of the game. So in the Pensacola, the enemy cruisers are your primary target. 
that's essentially what your job is, is to take them out and you are equipped. The tools that you have are best put to use doing that. After that, it's much more of a support ship. If you run into an enemy destroyer, absolutely you can do quite a bit of damage to it with your HE shells, but since your guns don't reload very quickly, what can happen is if you're facing an experienced enemy destroyer who, you know, knows when to disengage when he's spotted by a cruiser and not try to shoot the cruiser to death, then what can happen is you'll get an enemy destroyer that disengages and avoids you before you can kill it since your guns take so long to reload. So it's not the most effective ship at dealing with enemy destroyers, much, much more effective at dealing with enemy cruisers. We've got the Omaha out there, he's giving broadside to us, and he can't see us. That's another thing about this ship and the American heavy cruisers generally, to be honest with you, is they're pretty stealthy for cruisers. With the Makawa inspiration that I have on Norm Scott, I primarily have that as an inspiration because the Baltimore and New Orleans are stealthier than this Pensacola is. Took out the Omaha there, by the way. You saw how easy that was, so you can see why it's primarily your job to take out the enemy cruisers. You're so very good at it with the Pensacola. Anyway, the Pensacola's sea detectability range is something like 10.4 kilometers on my build, and you can get the Pensacola, New Orleans, and Baltimore all around to a 10 kilometer surface detectability, which is incredibly stealthy for cruisers and, I think, quite useful. It gives you a nice window of opportunity to get the first shot off on enemy targets and you're going to want to use that when you come up against enemy battleships. You'll be able to see them a lot further out than they'll be able to see you, and that's going to allow you to angle more. And that is also something that the ship is, I guess, designed to get you to start doing, since you're going to have to do it with the higher tier American heavy cruisers, New Orleans and Baltimore. That is angle. Now, the armor on the Pensacola is fully capable of bouncing or shattering AP shells from cruisers with smaller guns, like the Emil out there, which I think has, what, 152 millimeter guns? Maybe 127, I can't remember. Either way, the AP from that French cruiser, the Pensacola's armor can deflect it, shatter it, etc. Now, that is really not true of enemy battleships. You know, they're the Pensacola's armor is not quite good enough to deflect those kind of shots, but you still need to be angled anyway. Occasionally, you can get enemy battleship AP to shatter on your armor. It's not very rare, but if you're presenting an angle, when the enemy's AP shells penetrate, they're probably still going to do some nasty AP shell penetration damage to you, but they're less likely to hit your citadel and cause critical catastrophic damage. Plus, if you're giving a smaller target to the enemy, it's going to be harder for their shells to hit you, especially if you are a little bit further out. And it's pr good to play the Pensacola at longer ranges, especially versus enemy battleships. You see there the shells from the Congo completely miss us. And when you're firing at enemy battleships that are giving you broadside, you can absolutely use the AP, and you should. What you want to kind of do is aim for the upper hull uh, armor. It tends to be a lot lighter than the armor at the waterline, and if you're at far enough ranges too, you can get some plunging fire into the deck and you can citadel enemy battleships. I would venture to guess that the Pensacola is capable of citadeling the Congo, for example. We're not going to do it in this game, but you can see that we're angled away from these two battleships. They're, ha they're having an incredibly hard time hitting us when they do shoot, and we're able to lay some decent fire into them. 
Now, the game is almost wrapped up here. We've done 77,000 damage, and I find because the guns are so slow to turn on this ship, and because the reload time is also so long, it's not super easy to get incredibly high damage games in this ship, mostly because it's not a DPM monster like the light cruisers are. It's much more about the knockout punch with its AP on enemy cruisers. But even though you might not get a lot of damage, and damage shouldn't be your primary goal. Your primary goal should be to win and do things that will influence the win. And for that, you know, your number one job is to take out the light enemy cruisers, which serve as a counter to your destroyers, and I've talked about how influential destroyers are before. So you want to make the most out of your guns, use them where they are the most effective, and basically be a support ship to the rest of your team. You want to focus on doing things that get you the most XP when you're grinding this ship to continue down the line. So I hope you have found this somewhat helpful since the battle is about to end. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't done that. Been growing pretty fast recently, and it's fantastic. So thank you guys so much. I will see you next time. Goodbye.